Iconics on the track. Welcome to Talk to Jane. Hi. We have a special guest. How are you guys? My name is Andrea Alexander. You guys might know me from Jocelyn's Cabaret. He's in Florida, New York. Yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about you, Andrea. What's going um, on? I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Well, let's back it up. I was born in Florida, Broward County, and I was raised in Houston. And when I turned 18, 19, I moved to New Orleans where I was doing cabaret for five years up until I moved back to be closer to family once um, I decided to like, expand my family. I like got married, and, you know, had the baby, did all that. I was honestly trying to get out of the strip club and like leave the strip club alone. But and anybody who knows, who's dancing in a strip club knows that that life is addicting. Mm -hmm. The fast money is addicting. I was in Broward County up until I was about six, until we moved out here. We lived in Sunnyside when we first okay. moved out here. So really I'm originally from Sunnyside. Okay. So I do get down. Okay. <laughs> but I grew up in Shadow Creek, Pearland. Okay. Shadow Creek, Pearland. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you moved to where and got married? And had I went to New Orleans. Okay. I moved to New Orleans off of a whim. So basically it was spring break and like I was struggling financially and I had went with my mom to New Orleans and um basically it just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm not going back home. I'm gonna just stay here, I'm gonna be a stripper. Okay. And that's how I started dancing. So you started in New Orleans? Or yeah, New I started okay. dancing in New Orleans. I danced okay. all New over Orleans. Bourbon. I danced on um at Scores, Kama Sutra before it's the club that it is now. Um, barely legal, Rick's Cabaret. I danced at Penthouse on Bourbon. Um, I've basically danced at every club on on the strip, Bourbon Strip, except Stilettos and Big Daddies. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, so next thing, when did you become interested in like stripping or in your career? Okay, so when I was walking up and down Bourbon. Um, I was trying to figure out, I was like kind of depressed, like I'm walking over down bourbon, smoking weed out of people's hands, drinking, like damn bro, I'm about to get evicted, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, so I'm walking around and I'm like, fuck bro, what am I going to do, then I like looked over and I seen this girl standing in, in the school, in front of Kama Sutra with a wad of cash on her leg, like in the little garter belt, and I was like, damn, I could do that, like, I went up to her, I said, how much money do you make a night? And she was like, $3,000. I said, oh, that's exactly what I need right now. <laughs> like, Hello. So the first night I danced, I made about $300. And I was okay. like, okay, this is this is something. From there, I ended up like dancing. And like I told my mom, like, oh, I'm just going to dance for the week. And then the week turned into them for like two weeks, a month. And then the month turned into a year. And, like, I ended up standing there for five years dancing up until yeah. COVID. Oh, my gosh. So that's why you say that it's a big thing. Because you go back after you see how much you're making, you're, like, um, I guess, curious to know how much more you can make, right? So right. Like, like, it's, like, some days you'll make $1,000. And mm -hmm. the next day you might make six. Right. <laughs> like, I've literally had that happen to me before. Like, yeah. I've made I've made thousand, three thousand dollars in a night, and then boom, the next night I make six dollars, and I'm like, damn, God, what what are you trying to tell me right now? Like, are you telling me I need to leave a strip club? Like, do I need to do I need to be here? I be getting mixed signs when it comes to that because I'll be like, yeah. I told God I was like, okay, I'm gonna go audition for Jocelyn's Cabaret, and when I did audition, it was like, okay, God, if I don't make it, I'm gonna stop dancing. I'm not dancing no more. Like, I'm gonna take the pole down in my house. I will put it up and I'm going to just really focus on finishing my degree because I'm only like two classes away from like finishing my, my degree and starting my bachelor's. Oh, nice. I had my daughter. I so I do it. Yeah, I had my daughter. I was out of the club scenes, the club life. And mm -hmm. then um, for those two years, I had my daughter. I took care of my daughter. Well, I still do. But I, I was in school that entire time. I was okay. on online college classes the entire time I had my daughter. Okay. How yeah. old is she? She's two. This time last year, I was crying because I couldn't pass pre-calculus algebra. Like, Ugh, like last 
t- like this time last year, I was crying because I couldn't pass the class. Oh no! Like I was like freaking out, like on the verge of wanting to like off myself because I, for the life of me, could not pass the freaking class. Did you, did you pass it? Did you pass no. it? No, <laughs> I passed it with a D. Like oh, I, fin- I finessed the system and I found a school that would accept my D and let me move on to the next the next thing yeah all right so what suggestion or feedback would you give someone who is in your career because you just say that you were stripping you started nola um and now you are in a jasmine's cabaret which is like a huge accomplishment so how did you get there what advice would you give us i would say my journey started in new orleans like have friends out there okay. that lived out there that's how i was able to stay out there because i stayed with the girl that i had known Okay. And like through high from high school and stuff like that. So basically I stayed with her and her baby daddy and we all lived together for a while. And uh yeah, that's how I, I, I transferred, I mean like moved out there originally to be able to dance and like have a place to stay and everything. Honestly, just faith and believing in myself. Mm-hmm. Like it was never my like aspiration to be on reality TV. It mm. was never my aspiration, like, I knew about Jocelyn's Cabaret, but, like, I never knew what the auditioning process was like. So, when this year it was, like, one night only in person, I was like, oh, yeah, let me go kill this shit real quick. Because, mm. like, I, I'm, like, I'm confident in my skills as a dancer. Like, I'm confident in, like, my my worth ethic, you know? Yeah. And, like, I I had a feel, like, I knew, like, if I went in person and audition, like, I would, it would be a shooting, like, no problem. Like, I, be- I had that belief in myself, right. like, but I didn't dance, start dancing to be like, oh, I'm going to make it in this industry. I'm going to be in the industry. Like, mm. I can say when we had all got back to Miami and we were all at that table arguing, that's when I really gave a stop giving a fuck about filming. Like, I don't give a fuck about filming. I already can share my spot. Like, I'm just here to dance at this point. The camera's on. That's yeah. it. Like, I'm, I don't care about the reality TV. It's like my life is lit and the camera's just turned on. Okay. Like, that was so it. Me on a regular. Yeah, right. that was it. Okay. I'm going to start like you would tell us to believe in ourselves. Yeah, right? believe in yourself. Have faith in yourself. And like, um, trust the process. Trust the process. Team Chris, you have to give respect in okay. order to receive respect. Mm. That's why I never put my hands on none of them yeah. girls in that house. Because how do I expect them to respect me? Right. Like, I'm going to give you respect. Right. And you gonna, I'm going to kill you with kindness. Right. Like, Ooh, I love that. I'm going to kill you with kindness. And you kill ain't going to have no, kindness. no, you ain't going to have no reason but to respect me. Mm. People want the status without the work. And I'm going to be so real. The so, and I'm not shaming, I'm not shaming sex workers. I don't say shame anybody who make their money for how they make their money. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm a dancer. I'm a cabaret dancer. I dance. I've been dancing. I've, I've been a pole dancer. Okay. And my work and my ethic and my pole dancing and talent is going to outweigh your clout every time. Right. This season showed that clout versus talent and talent is going to win every Always. time. Every Always. time. Yeah. Every time. Speaking about the house, like, how was it for you, like, entering and being a part of the cabaret? And, like, when you were actually recruited, it was, like, how was it, it for was you? Giving, like, it was giving luxury. <laughs> the house was really nice. All the toilets were heated and had bidets. And I use a bidet, so I was like, ooh, this is wrong for me. Like, they got the bidet, the seats are heated. But, like, being in that space with all those women, like, at first, it was, like, irritating. Like, yeah. I was irritated. I was like... Damn, Missy, you ain't just carrying the hoes. You carrying the hoes like I'm out here doing that. with the hoes. Oh, they all mad to the doll or whatever. But Missy is just Missy. Yes. Like I really learned a lot about being a showgirl from mm-hmm. this lady named Holly Tamale that used to work at Barely Legal with me. And let me tell you, Holly Tamale is that bitch. Like, she's this oh, white God. lady and she fucking sued the clubs and bought her husband a fucking boat. Like, what? that's a boss ass bitch if I know one. And yeah. like now she fucking, she has like a cabaret herself called Rich Girls. Oh, and like okay. every month they go and they, they dance at like different spots, like in New Orleans. And like, it's like a whole cabaret. It's literally a cabaret called Rich Girls that she's like put together. I love your energy. Like mm-hmm. I would watch a show and I'm just like, Andrea is so cool. Like you really are chilled. Um, People don't phase you. The words don't phase you. I grew up in a military family. You know? I grew up in a oh. military family. Okay. I'm one out of five kids. My mom ain't say to me 10 times worse and hurt my feelings for real. Like, yeah, the comments about my ADHD hurt me. The comments in the mm-hmm. in the plane hurt me a little bit about growing up. But 
I'm gonna be real. Natural had her reason to say that. I'm in a space where everybody's mm. 30 plus. I'm 24. Like they don't want to be around no childish ass shit. They here to work, get their shit done, and keep it moving. If you right. can't work, keep your shit moving. You will be replaced. A lot of these girls are mad because they they didn't make tour and they feel entitlement and they feel like, oh, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. But what work have you done to deserve right. to be here for real? Mm-hmm. Shit that Jocelyn be saying be true about you bitches and y'all be mm-hmm. mad. Y'all mm-hmm. are mad because the shit holds truth and it hurts your feelings. Mm-hmm. And if it hurts your feelings for feelings that bad, why not change it? Right. Why not? You don't think Jocelyn has told me shit about myself? Oh, do this, do that for you. Like, at least I'm presentable in the space. She told me what she had to say about me. Got it off her chest. Mm-hmm. And after that, I made changes to what I need to do That's to be it. in the space. And look at me, I'm still here. I agree with you. I feel like a lot of the time when things are being said to us, at first we might not be receptive to it, but... If you do find some truth to it, make changes. Because right, that's how you and grow, it's tough you know? love. And I'm going to be real. Like, my mom's Latin. I think it's just a Latin thing. Like, Where are you guys from? Like, what? My country? mom's Argentine and Italian. Oh. So, like, I'm okay. Latin Argentine for real. Like, my family Italian. is, like, my mom is, like, I'm sorry, mom, love you. But you can get a little volatile. Like, my mom can be volatile with the words. Like, my mom will tell you some shit that will hurt your fucking feelings to the core. Oh and, God. like, you girls in the house talking that shit. Yeah, I cried or whatever. But, like. That don't mean shit. I'm a sensitive gangsta. And let me <laughs> okay, tell you. Gangsta's cry too. Marco gangsta's was cry too. What, like, what they say? It's when the vulture cries. Like, and my thing is, I was stressed out. Do Cha Cha got three different, like, routines. Like, Do Cha oh Cha has three different, like, variations. Like, you okay. got the Floyd variation. Then you got the Starless variation. Now that we we have a new one, the tour variation. I never learned no eight count in my life. I was stressed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to cry, bitch. I was stressed.